the number is that, you know, that that point where the darkness gives birth to light, basically. That's my definition of it. That out of the darkness, out of the depths, out of that space, out of that abyss, the number has been able to illuminate and illustrate the ever changing complexity and beauty of the African American experience. In 1977, Wu Bellamy established the Penumbra Theater Company in St. Paul, Minnesota, with a mission to give African American narratives, which had been largely ignored, a space to be shared. The success of the company broke a barrier of prejudice and discrimination by challenging the exclusion of African American experiences in the mainstream theater community. Bellamy created Penumbra Theater to provide a space where Black playwrights and actors could show their work and tell their story. Today, Penumbra continues to inspire other African-American theater companies to break barriers in order to tell the Black narrative, an integral part of American culture. Before 1910, African-American representation in theater was widely restricted to minstrel shows. These shows began in 1828 with Jim Crow, an African-American caricature created by plantation owner Thomas Rice. By the late 1840s, these minstrel shows depicting stereotypical African-American caricatures were widespread across America. The shows created tropes, depicting African-Americans as uncivilized with bizarre dialects. At the end of the American Civil War, minstrel shows offered an opportunity for African-Americans to enter into the American show business by acting out these caricatures as authentic Blacks. By the turn of the century, minstrel shows began to lose their popularity. The Great Migration describes the mass movement of African Americans from the South to the North, incentivized by fear of lynchings and hate groups in the South, and promising new factory jobs in the North. With the Great Migration came predominantly African-American neighborhoods such as Harlem and New York City. Out of these Black communities came art as a way to express the changing Black experience. This movement later became known as the Harlem Renaissance and spread throughout the country. The movement ended with the Great Depression, but later found a resurgence in the Civil Rights Movement. Growing consciousness of Northern segregation led to the creation of new cultural artistic expressions characterized by an emphasis on the Black voice and the African-American desire for self-determination. The Black arts movement emerged as the artistic side to the Civil Rights Movement and was led by politically motivated Black artists whose art created pride in the Black identity and culture. The movement included artists such as poet Amiri Baraka, who in his poem Black Art describes the need for African American voices in general American media. Another piece of media created by Baraka is his 1965 essay, The Revolutionary Theater. In his essay, Baraka discussed the need for change through literature and theater. Prior to 1976, opportunities for African Americans in Twin Cities Theater were limited. Most African Americans involved in Twin Cities Theater either taught or studied at universities, with few opportunities to apply their training outside of the institution. While the Guthrie established the Twin Cities as an important center for theater, it didn't provide many opportunities for artists of color and did not produce plays depicting Black experiences, with only one African American written production having been performed between 1963 and the founding of Penumbra Theater. In 1976, the federal government provided the Halle Q. Brown Center, a community center for African-American city residents, with $150,000 for cultural arts programming as a part of the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act, or CETA. A part of the money was used to establish a theater directed by University of Minnesota professor Lou Bellamy. During its first year, the theater put on two shows promoting discussion about American society with regard to race. In November of 1977, the theater performed Eden, written by Black playwright Steve Carter, as its first play as a publicized theater company. 
With the company established, Bellamy named the theater Penumbra to illustrate its mission to tell the African-American experience, stories which were hidden in the shadow of American theater. Penumbra gained far-reaching news coverage of its productions, with city and community newspapers covering most of Penumbra's plays, a type of news coverage historically less available to black theaters. Because of this, news of Penumbra plays were able to reach a wider audience. You can't unring a bell. And once you found out that he had a voice, and then they were, and then people around the country found out he had things to say. And so people popped up. It, it, it was no mistake that August Wilson showed up in the rehearsal. Eden attracted playwright August Wilson, who collaborated with Penumbra to produce his first professional play, Black Bart and the Sacred Hills. Three years later, Penumbra premiered another of Wilson's plays, Jitney. Jitney established August Wilson's signature style and discussed the American experience from an African-American perspective. The play is part of a group of 10 of Wilson's plays called The 20th Century Cycle from which two plays were awarded Pulitzer Prizes. After premiering at Penumbra, Black Bart and the Sacred Hills and Jitney were performed, along with other August Wilson plays, across the country, including on several Broadway stages. Wilson's success brought Penumbra into the public eye. In 1987, Penumbra had produced its first iteration of Black Nativity, a play premiered in New York City in 1961 that became an African-American cultural holiday classic through its telling of the birth of Jesus through the lens of the African-American experience. Black Nativity required a big ensemble, meaning Penumbra was able to introduce a multi-generational cast to the Penumbra Company, increasing Penumbra's involvement in the community. Being an annual production, Black Nativity consistently attracted a large audience that their other productions were not able to bring in which helped Penumbra survive, despite financial difficulties. The more and more Penumbra has done what it's done for over 40 years, the more and more theaters are realizing that African-American theater, the viable money-making and elevating member of, of, of asset to any theater. During the late 1900s, Larger theaters began producing more plays written by African-American playwrights and other playwrights of color. Because these larger theaters had a larger base of support, they were able to attract more people to a show by a black playwright than a small theater may have been able to, an occurrence that helped more people understand the African-American experience through theater. But this also led to many small cultural theaters losing revenue. During this time, Many Penumbra alums left to perform or direct with more financially successful companies such as Guthrie or various Broadway theaters. I went to Broadway with August Wilson's Radio Golf, Mary McClinton. Through August Wilson's Jitney, all the Penumbra acting aesthetic in New York. This scattering of Penumbra alums spread the mission of Penumbra across the country and inspired the establishment of other black theaters, some of which still continue to produce plays. Today, the barrier of prejudice and discrimination in American theater against African-American narratives continues to be broken down piece by piece. Penumbra paved the way for theaters such as Pangea World Theater and Theater Moo to provide a space where the American story with all its different cultures could be produced and given an audience. While theaters depicting Black experiences are now more widespread, the barrier of prejudice and discrimination against African American theater still stands. While Black actors and directors receive Academy Awards, they are generally still living in the shadow of their white co-stars. Because of the continuity of this barrier of prejudice and how it has changed to use softer language to belie its discrimination, Theaters such as Penumbra, dedicated to showing the African-American experience, continue to break the barrier and let African-American narratives step out of the shadow and into the light. 
Who? Who stole the cookie? Stole the cookie. Who stole the cookie? Stole. Stole the cookie. Stole. Stole the cookie. Who stole the cookie? Stole the cookie. Who stole the cookie from the cookie shop?